Ow. All right. Hey, welcome to Rampart Christian Fellowship. Today is July 24th, 2016. And today we are in part three of our series of messages titled The Feels. Uh, the Feels is a, is a pop culture term. Uh, it's defined as a wave of emotions that, that, that sometimes cannot be adequately explained. Um, this series of messages will, be, will address some of the deep emotional subjects that we all deal with, deal with from time to time. And so today... We're talking about the feel, uh, if, uh, the subtitle is Ever Feel Anxious. We're talking about the, the emotions of anxiety, worry, and fear. So this is, this is something that, that everybody deals with, everybody I know. I don't know anybody that doesn't struggle with some type of anxiety or some type of worry at some point. And so let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We pray that you would help us to understand your will concerning these, this area of fear, Lord. I pray that your spirit would fall upon us, that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you, what, what you would have us to understand this morning. And I pray that you would just be, what, be with us and draw us closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. So, anxiety, worry, and fear. So, uh, the, these things are serious. We, we struggle with this stuff every single day. And so I had three major, or three points that I wanted to, to address, and then we're going to get into the scripture and what the scripture says about fear and anxiety and worry. So the first uh, point, sub point that I had was, what are you afraid of? So let's talk about the things that we fear. Most of us, or a lot of us, well, we worry about money, right? We worry about how much money we're going to make and how much money we have to spend and how many bills we got and and you know, are, is is our money safe? Because you know that we worry about the economy and what's going on. And I see so many people more, you know, struggling. And I confess myself, I, I still, I mean, I, I've been walking with the Lord for ten years now, and I still, I trust God with my finances. I trust that He is going to provide. But still, when I look at my bills and it's greater than my income, I still feel a level of anxiety there. And and so I have, I have to continually fight this battle of faith when it comes to the area of money. But I can tell you this, uh, uh, for 10 years, I have been trusting God with my finances, and God is faithful. You can trust Him. And I, and I encur uh, encourage you, what, whatever you're facing in the area of finances, take it to God. Say, Lord, I trust you with this. Lord, my life is yours. My finances are yours. And do with them as you will. And, and, and God shows up in Hebrews. It says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And anybody who comes to God must first believe that He is, and second, that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And I believe that, that, that God can, make a, can cause, uh, cause us to have favor in the area of finances. I mean, it talks about it in the Old Testament. He, God specifically told the nation of Israel, if you do these things, you will be blessed. If you, do, if you do what my will is, you will be blessed. You will be the lender and not the borrower. You will be the head and not the tail. He made promises to the nation of Israel concerning their finances and their, and their welfare. And God is faithful. And God still makes the same promises to us. If we do what his will is, he will take care of us. Amen? So we worry about money. We also worry about our children. If you're a parent and you have children... You worry about your children, right? You worry that, that, that you know, what decisions are they going to make and how, how, uh, how are they going to be taken care of and, and are, is, are, are people going to go, go try and hurt them? We, we, we worry about our children, but God is faithful. So, so you know, uh, the common practice in the church is to dedicate your child to the Lord. Where you, you, you take your child when your child is born and, you, and, you, and it's called a baby dedication. When you take your child and you take it before the congregation of the church and you, and you say, say before the congregation and before God, God, we dedicate our child to you and, we, and, and, and our child is in your hands. So that's, that's uh, one thing that can help you with the area of anxiety when it comes to your children is you dedicate them to the Lord, right? We worry about the future. We worry about what's going to happen next. What does the future hold? We worry about our past. What have we done? What are the replication? Uh, 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 what, what's going to happen because of what I've done? We worry about death. We worry about oh, I don't want to die. 
We worry about sickness. We, we worry about being accepted or being rejected. We worry about all these things. And, what, and, and the question is, you know, what are we afraid of? What are we, you know, why are we worrying about all this stuff? I mean, all this stuff is, is real. This is all stuff we have to deal with. But if we are Christians and we believe that God's word is true, we have to remember that he is faithful. Amen? So where does fear and anxiety come from is the second point, is the second question. So we know what, what our fears are. We have to ask, where does this fear come from? Well, I, the, the, the scripture is clear that fear does, does, the, uh, is the opposite of faith. Fear does not come from God. In fact, God encourages us not to fear all through the scripture. And, and uh, there's only one fear that glorifies God. There's only one fear that we can have that can actually glorify God. And that's the fear of God himself. Because God is the ultimate power in the universe. God can do anything. God has the ability to take life or give life. God has the uh, ability to bless or to curse. And so it, it, is an, it, is, it is actually an intelligent thing for us to, to honor and fear and reverence the creator of the universe who has the power to give us life or take our life away. And not only to take our physical life, but he can also cast us into eternal hell. So, so uh, when we think of this powerful, all-powerful being that is the judge of judges, the king of kings and the lord of lords, it is a wise and, 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 and God-glorifying thing to actually fear God. And, to, and, and one of the things that God brings a, a, a charge against people is when they don't fear God. When people don't fear God in their hearts and they don't, re they don't remember the fear of the Lord, that's when people walk into sin. Oh, God's not going to judge me. I can do whatever, whatever you, ever I want. That is a fool. That is a fool who thinks they're not going to be judged by God. Amen? Finally, I want to talk about this, the, the, what the Bible says about all the other fears besides the fear of the Lord. God says that we should not fear. <laughs> that, that, we, that we should be courageous. That we are created as children of God to be brave. We're, we're created to be brave followers of the Lord because if God is for us, no one can be against us, right? And so this, this is what we're going to talk about today in the scriptures uh, on, on the area of fear and anxiety and worry. We're going to talk about what, what the Bible says and how God encourages us to, to, to move forward through it. So we're gonna, let's go ahead and get your Bibles and open them up to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6. Now this is uh, the change of leadership from Moses to Joshua in, in, in Deuteronomy 31. This is when Moses has led the people out of Egypt and they, they went, went through the, the desert for 40 years and they're about to finally go into the promised land and, and Moses is not going to lead them but Joshua is. But look what... Uh, uh, Joshua is told in, Mo in, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, it says this, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. Talking about all the people that are going to come against you. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you, and He will, he, he will not leave you nor forsake you. So this is the encouragement from Moses to, to Joshua don't be afraid. I mean, that, that's what cost them 40 years in the desert is because the, 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 the spies went into the land, into the promised land, and, and, and Joshua and Caleb came back and said, yes, we're good, we can do this. And the, and the rest of the spies said, no, there's giants there, we're afraid, we can't go. And because of their fear, it cost them 40 years, that whole generation died because of the fear of those, of those spies. So we, that's another point that I didn't put in the notes, but I want to, fear is very costly. It costs us. Every time that we, that we behave in, a, in an attitude of fear, it's going to cost us something. Amen? So let's go to the next one. In the book of Joshua, again, Joshua is, is, is encouraged not to be afraid. Joshua chapter 1. Um, so let's, let's go back to verse 7, actually. Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. It says... Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all that the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. And do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper in wherever you go. 
This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Uh, you should meditate on it day and night, and you should observe to do according to all that is written. For, when, uh, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I ha have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So be strong and very courageous. And again, right, right there is the promise that if you do these things, the, uh, the Lord God is with you and he will prosper you. He will cause you to, to, to have what you need and even more than what you need. Amen. So let's go to the book of Psalms now and to one of the most popular Psalms uh, that most people have heard. But, it, but it's important to talk about this in Psalm chapter 23, right? Psalm 23, let's just, let's just read the whole thing, shall we? shall we? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, in Psalm 23, 1. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That psalm has comfort, so, comforted so many souls, and, and it's, it has truly led people into this place where they can know they don't need to fear. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we have nothing to fear, right? We, 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 we will fear no evil because God is with us. So that, that's the main point is that, is that God is, that you'll see in the scriptures is when God is with you, you don't have to worry about anything. When you are a child of the Most High God, God, God will make a way for you to, 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 to prosper and he will protect you from your enemies. Amen? Let's look what it says in, in Psalm 27, verse 1. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. So, so we, we're kind of getting this idea from the scripture that, that it, as long as God is with us, we're good. We don't have to freak out. We don't need to stress. We don't need to get anxious. We don't need to worry because God is with us. God is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I, I'm not afraid of anybody. What can, what can man do to me, right? Let's look what it says in... Psalm uh, 34, verse 4. It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he and delivered me from, from all my fears. So, so this is what David is saying. He said, I, I'm, I'm seeking God and we're praying to God and he hears us and he will deliver us out of those fears. See, fear, fear is a way that the enemy it, can put us in a, in a prison of our own fears. We're, we're afraid of what's going to happen. We're afraid of, uh, of what those people out there are doing. or We're afraid that people are going to steal our stuff. But, it, but when we seek the Lord, when we seek the Lord with all of our heart, He will deliver us out of those fears. We don't have to worry anymore, right? Uh, Psalm 118, verse 6. Psalm 118, verse 6. says, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? And that's, that's the question. I mean, we, you know, we, we don't need to be afraid. When we have the God of all the universe, the creator of the universe is with us. What can a man do to, to, with, do to us when we have the creator of the universe on our side? Amen. We need to understand that. We need to be set free from these fears. But we also need to understand that there is that one fear that we should have, and it's the only fear that glorifies God, and that's, that, that's the fear of the Lord. And look what uh, uh, Solomon says in the book of Ecclesiastes. So back from the book of Psalms, back to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. See, the, the book of Ecclesiastes was wit written by King Solomon, and it was all the wisdom that he gained through his whole life. It says, this is what I saw. I mean, everything is foolishness. Everything is vanity. Everything is worthless, basically, is what he says over and over again in the book of Ecclesiastes. He's like, all this stuff we do, and, and then you die, and somebody else get, get, gets to enjoy it. All, all this working and striving and, 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 and seeking after the things of this world. It's because Solomon did it all. 
He had a huge kingdom. He had all the riches. He had all these wives. He had, he had whatever he wanted. And, and, and none of it really satisfied him. And so he, he writes this wisdom down in, in, in the book of Ecclesiastes. And he comes to the end of the matter. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, he says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And this is what he says, Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. In other translations, it says, This is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So that's his conclusion. After living his whole life, being able to do whatever he wants, and, and seeing that it doesn't amount to anything, he comes to the end of his life and he says, this is what we should do. This is our, our, uh, the, our best plan of action, is to fear God and keep his commandments, because this is the whole duty of man. Amen? All right, let's jump into the New Testament now. And let's hear straight from the words of Jesus about the, about the issue of worry. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 25. So th this, is on the, this is the end of the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus has all these people in front of him. And, and he says, this whole multitude of people, and he starts to talk to them about worry because it's very important, right? And, and, but he asks them some very important questions. And he tells them some very important statements. So in Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 25, this is what Jesus tells the multitude. He says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, what you, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And are, they not more of more, are you not more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So, so, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Uh, how they grow. They neither sow nor uh, toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, in all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now, now, if God clothes the grass of the field, which which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will He not much more clothe you, O you of little little faith? In verse 31, it says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall I eat, or what shall I drink, or what shall I wear? For after these things the Gentiles seek. For, for you, your heavenly Father knows that you need of all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. For, for, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Don't freak out about the future. And I'd say, don't freak out about the past. Don't worry about what, what you're going to eat or how, or how are you going to make money or what, what you're going to do. It, he says it right there in verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all this will be added to you. That's the promise just like he made to the Israelites in the Old Testament. Do these things, trust in God and he will prosper you. And I've been living this for 10 years. And it's true. <laughs> this isn't just some hypothetical that God might. No, if you, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, God will provide all your needs. He's faithful. He, will do, he, he has the ability to do anything. God is real and he is able to, to, to make all blessing abound towards you. But, but he, he commands that we seek him first. We need to understand that he's not just suggesting, oh, if you want to seek me first, it's all good. And if not, it's all good. No, he says, seek first the kingdom of God. It's, it's an actual command. He's not, it's not a suggestion. God wants to be first in our life. He wants us to seek him with our whole heart. Well, the first thing you do in the morning, it should be seeking God. The last thing you do at night before you go to sleep should be seeking God. All the day long, we should be thinking about God and where we stand. That's what God wants from us. And for some people, that's just too much to ask. They're like, no, nah, I got to do me. No, <laughs> that's, that's the foolishness of the way of this world that says you got to do you. You don't need to do you. You need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Do you, do you understand how awesome that is? As long as you can do that one verse, you don't have to worry anymore. You don't have to freak out. God is going to take care of you. Amen? Amen. So let's go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Again, from the words of Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus is talking uh, to his disciples now. And he, and he tells his disciples, because he's sending the disciples out, he's going to go, he says, go talk to all these people. And verse 28, he says, 
And do not fear fear those who will kill the body and cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who who is able to destroy both the body and the soul in hell. And let's keep going. In in verse 29, are uh, are, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? But, but um, But the very hairs of your head and all are numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are, are of more value than, than many sparrows. So God tells us, do not fear, because we are worth more than just, just a, a, a couple of sparrows. God knows the very hairs on our head. He knows everything. He knows what's going on. And he says, do not fear, because, because God, he, he's, he knows your situation. He is able to help you in your time of need. So, so trust in the Lord, and do not be afraid of the things of, the, of, of this world. Amen? Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 16, verse 13. First Corinthians, chapter 16, verse 13. Um, 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says this. It says, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave and be strong. This is, this is uh, the, the, the Apostle Paul, he wrote a letter to the Corinthian church and he tells them, this is, this is at the, the end of the letter, he's telling them now, watch, stand fast in the faith and be brave and be strong. Uh, uh, let, and in verse 14 he says, let all that you do be done in love. So you see, he, he's giving instruction to the church. This is what we should do. If, if, you're par- if you're a follower of Christ, you're called to be brave and be strong and stand fast in the faith. God has not called us to be all scared of this world or scared of, of death or scared of anything. We don't need to be scared anymore because we have God with us. Amen? And so we, so we can stand fast in the faith and be brave and be strong. Amen? Let's go to... Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. And I encourage you to memorize this verse if you get a chance. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, given, uh, uh, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So does fear come from God? According to that scripture, no. Fear does not come from God. Fear comes from the enemy. It's the devil who wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He's the one who wants us to believe that, that there is no hope. And he wants us to believe that everything can be taken away from us. But understand, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we don't need to be afraid of anything. We don't need to worry about anything because God is with us. Amen? 2 Timothy 1.7. I, I encourage you to write that down somewhere and memorize that verse because it's, it's important that you know that, that. That the fear that you feel, that's, that's not coming from God. That's coming from the enemy. But God is giving you power, love, and a sound mind. Fine, uh, a couple more verses. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. So that's closer to the end of your Bible. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. They say, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. So why, why, why do we need to not worry? Because God cares for us. We can just take all of our cares, everything that we're worrying about, and we can give it to God. It says, casting all your cares on the Lord, because God cares for us. He is our heavenly Father. He considers uh, all the things that are in our life. He knows everything that's going on, and He cares about it. And He can make, uh, uh, he, he can make all grace abound to us. Look what it says um, in verse 5 of 1 Peter. He says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to the elders. Yes, all of you be submissive, submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. So I, I, so I believe if we... Uh, if we, if we understand these verses, if we understand that God wants us to be, be brave and not be afraid of anything, but he also, and he wants to give us grace, we need to understand that we need to humble ourselves before God because he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So if we want the grace of God upon our lives, we just need to humble ourselves before God. Amen? First um, John chapter 4, verse 18. Closer to the end. First John chapter 4. Verse 18. 
First John chapter 4, verse 18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because the uh, fear involves torment. And, uh, but he who fears has not been per made perfect in love. And in verse 19, it says, We love him because he first loved us. So there is no fear in love. Some people think love is a scary thing. You know, and, and people hold back their love. I don't want to love that person or I don't want to love God because, because when, you, when you love someone, it, it makes you vulnerable, right? And when, and when you're giving love, it make, it, some people will, will see that as, as, as weakness when you're trying to give love. But the, the thing is, if we are Christians, we understand, we need to understand that God has loved us first. He's already gone to the cross and showed us how much he loved us. It says that there's no greater love than this than one to lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus laid down his life for us. He went to the cross to pay the price for every one of our sins. From the time we were born to the time we died, God, uh, God paid for every single sin on the, Christ of cross, uh, on the cross of Christ. And um, at, on that cross, when, before Jesus died, he said, it is finished. To tell us die. That means the payment for sin has been paid. And so, and that was done because God loved us. Because God wanted us to be able to be at peace with him. So how, how, how are we set free from this fear and anxiety that we feel? It says that perfect love casts out fear. So we need to know that God loves us perfectly. And when we know that God's love is complete and perfect, then we, then when we, and we receive that, then we, then we are able to walk encourage and, and stand fast in our faith. We don't need to worry anymore because we know we have the perfect love of God inside of us and we are set free from fear because perfect love casts out fear. So, we, so it has to do a lot with your faith. What do you believe? Do you really believe that God loves you that much to go on a cross and die for your sins? And do you, do, do you know, do you receive that love? Because if you do, it's going to set you free from fear. Amen? And finally, I, I, I need to make this point very clear that, that as followers of Christ, we need to know that, that God is with us and we need, we need to not be cowards. We need to not be afraid of things. We need to not walk in fear. Because look what it says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. This is crazy. In Revelation 21, verse 8, it says, But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, abominable, Murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars will have their part in the lake of fire which burns with fire and brimstone. And this is the second death. See, you can be born once and you can die twice. Or you can be born twice and you can die once. <laughs> if you're born again, that means you're born again by faith in Jesus Christ. And that you've received the spiritual second birth. And if you receive that spiritual second birth, your body might die, but your soul will live on forever in eternity. But if, you, but if you do not get born again, and you do not receive the love of God through faith in Jesus Christ, you, you can die twice. Your physical body can die, but then your spirit can be sent into hell. <laughs> and it says, for the cowardly, that's the first thing it lists. So if we walk in a continual uh, practice fear, God says that, that that's not a person who is saved. That's not a person who is born again. A person who has received the perfect love of God has cast out all fear. The cowardly, the unbelieving, see, cowardice and unbelief go hand in hand. See, you can't be having all faith in God and still worrying. Either you have faith in God or you're worrying, right? They, they, they don't go hand, uh, they, they don't go together. They're, they're mutually exclu exclusive. <laughs> Either you have faith or you have fear. Now, I, now I'm not saying there isn't a battle that goes on. I mean, I, I, like I said before, I still have some anxiety that comes up in certain situations, but I take, take the word of God for what it is as the truth, and I battle that fear with the truth, and I, and I receive the love of God, and I walk forward. And I, I'll, I'll feel the fear starting to come up and try, and try and take me down, and I'll say, no, the word of God is truth. And I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be afraid. I'm not gonna worry about how my finances are gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna trust in God. I trust you, Lord. So if you wanna, if you wanna actually actively fight that that 
that battle, uh, against the fight the good fight of faith, it, it, you're fighting the good fight against fear. Because fear and faith are opposites, right? And, and that's what the Apostle Paul told Timothy. Fight the good fight of faith as a good soldier of God. And so how do we fight the good fight? Is We, we trust God even when everything in our, around us is falling apart. Everything around us is telling us we should be afraid or, or we, should, we should be worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. And you say, no, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to trust in God. Amen? That's fighting the good fight of faith. So finally, how does this whole study, all these verses that we just talked about, how does this apply to our life? How do we actually live this out? How do we do what God has called us to do? The Bible is clear about the topics of anxiety, worry, and fear. The only fear that is not a sin is the fear of God. <laughs> so we must draw near to God, believe His words, and we must remember that God has given us victory over fear. So we need to meditate on this scripture and believe that it is true. Look at Romans chapter 8. The book of Romans, chapter 8, starting in verse 31. We need to meditate on this scripture, and we really need to believe that it's true, that it's not just some words in a book. This is the words of God, and he's written it to us. In verse 31 of Romans, chapter 8, this is what, we, this is what it says. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him give us also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. He, uh, um, who, he, um, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. That, uh, who, shall who shall separate us? From the love of Christ shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution, shall famine, shall nakedness, now peril, now sword. In verse 36 it says, as, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. In verse 37 it says this, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And if God is for us, who can be against us? I, I pray that you would meditate on that scripture, that you would find courage, that you would be strong and courageous, that you would not be afraid of anything in this world because you belong to God. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for your truth. I thank you for, for giving us courage to face what we need to face. I pray that you would continue to, to remind us that you are with us always. You will never leave us nor forsake us. I pray that we would find joy and courage in that, that we would not fall to the, to the worries of this foolish world that is, that is perishing, but we would, we would cling to your truth and we would, we would have an everlasting hope for eternity. So I thank you and I praise you and I, I, and, and I just pray that everyone, anyone who hears this message would be encouraged to stand in, in true faith. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.